In the last uh, video, we learned how to take the dot product of two vectors. In this video, we're going to talk about that other kind of multiplication. Remember how I said uh, we could either use 4 cross 3 equals 12, or 4 dot 3 equals 12, or even 4 parentheses 3 equals 12. Well, we've now talked about, let's see, we've talked about this kind. We've talked about what this dot for multiplication means in the specific context of vectors. And now we're going to talk about this version. Now, uh, what I've been doing all quarter so far is giving you examples in R2 and then going into R3 and often talking about uh, or higher dimensions like R4, R5, R7. Um, once we get into bigger numbers like that, the theory applies the same way, but then, then the actual work gets cumbersome. So we've been pretty much restricting ourselves to work in R3 with the occasional exception to do something in R5, just to show that it can be done. I'm not going to do the same thing here. I'm not going to start in R2. And the reason for that is that the result of a cross product in R2 is not the same as a cross product in any other dimension. So I'm going to jump straight into R3 and show you how to find, show you what the definition is first of a cross product in R3, and then I'll show you how to find it. Before I start though, I want to make the point that your textbook lays its vectors out like this to define what a cross product is. And I've chosen instead to write my vectors in this form. And it may not be, they're equivalent. These are absolutely equivalent forms of these two matrices, or sorry, these two vectors. Um, that should be a three. But I've chosen to use this form instead of this form because as I go into an explanation as to how to find the cross product of, of two vectors, uh, this form is more convenient for copying them into the sort of uh, template that you need to do that. So with that said, where your textbook says uh, A1, A2, A3, or U1, U2, U3 in, in this form, I'm going to use this form throughout this video. So I'm going to set out, uh, start out by setting down two vectors, U and V, and then I'm going to define the cross product, which is written this way, U cross V is equal to your textbook is using a column vector here for this purpose, um, u2 times v3 minus u3 times v2. And then u3 times v1 minus u1 times v3. You probably already have noticed that these two numbers here match, but they're reversed. Here u has the 2, here v has the 2. Here v has the 3, and in this product here u has the 3. Same thing here. u has the 3 here, v has it over here. And then we have uh, u1v2 minus u2 times v1. Remember that each component in a vector, at least at the moment, is just a number. This could be 3, negative 1, 0, 2, 5, negative 2, right? It could be any number of, uh, of numbers, um, which is one of the reasons we do this generic work first, is to show you that this is, this is the definition regardless of what those numbers actually are. Now, this is the definition you'll see in your textbook, but this is also often written this way. The vector u2 v3 minus u3 v2 comma u3 v1 minus u1 v3 comma, this is just different notation, u1 v2 minus u2 v1. And lastly, for the, for the moment, you can also write this as u2 v3 minus u3 v2 i hat plus, remember this is a, if I have a vector a, b, c, another way to write that vector is as a i plus b j plus c k. Okay, so that's what I'm doing here. I'm converting the vector in this form, in this form, to this form here. So then my second term here is u3 v1 minus u1 v3, and that's times j hat plus u1 v2 minus u2, whoops, let me try that u again, u2 v1 
times k. Oops, I forgot my parentheses there. K hat. So that's just a, a that's three different ways to represent that vector. But this is the definition of a cross product. Now there are a couple things to observe here. One is that this middle term. Uh, let me start with the outer terms. The the i term and the k term. Notice these are in numerical order to start with, right? 2 comes before 3, 1 comes before 2, but in the middle term it's backwards. 1 comes before 3, but the, the, the 1 term, the, the u3, is coming before the v1 in the product. Now, that's because u3 is in this position here, and v1 is all the way over in this position here. Why that happens will become clear in a, in a moment, but let me make one other observation. Another way you could write this would be as just as you had it here, right? This term, this term uh, with the i hat. I forgot my hat here. Um, and then the last term is the same. This term is the same as this term. The only difference is that this term here, here it's positive. And uh, remembering from algebra that a minus b can be written as negative or the opposite of b minus a, I could write this middle term as minus u1 v3 minus u3 v1. Depending on whether it was more important to me to have these um, uh, u then v values go from lower to higher or what. And it, the other thing that will it'll turn out the reason that it matters is uh, depending on how you decide to compute the cross product. And we haven't got to that part yet. So right now I'm just showing you these are the different ways you could uh, you could write it. This is true of any vector. Your textbook is using this method. I tend to use uh, this one here, and I'll show you how, why that turns out to be the case as we go along here. So now how do you get this? From these two vectors here, how do you get something that looks like this or something that looks like this? And here's the answer to that question. Before I can really show you that, I need to move some things around. Unfortunately, <laughs> the software does not let me do that very easily. And if I try to do it before I start the recording again, it just jumps back to where it was. So I have to do it all on screen. All right, so here we have your textbook's definition of a cross product in R3, and here is one of the other forms, and this is the form we're going to end up in this next example. So how do you get this from these two vectors here? We're going to create a specialized matrix. I'm going to take each of these vectors, u and v, the components of u and v, and I'm going to put them into a matrix, u1, u2, u3, v1, v2, and v3. And I'm going to make the note, the, the observation, first of all, that if you look at this very first term here, u2, v3, that's these two numbers right here, u2, v3, and u3, v2, u3, v2. And there's a negative between them. There's a minus operation going on here. So we have u2 v3 minus u3 v2. That looks an awful lot like a determinant. And that's exactly what it is. So what we're going to do is we're going to concatenate this matrix with i hat, j hat, k hat, and we're going to take its determinant. And the way we do that, if you'll recall, is to pick any row or any column, and we're going to do cofactor expansion. Well, I'm going to pick this row specifically. And the reason for that is that I want one, one of each of these as a coefficient, if you will, on each of the terms below. Notice how the result is going to have an i hat as a coefficient, a j hat as a coefficient, and then a k hat as a coefficient. So let's get started with this computation. This determinant is equal to starting with row 1, column 1, because I've chosen this row to do my cofactor expansions. I'm going to have i hat times the determinant of this submatrix, which is u2 v3 minus u3 v2. And hopefully you'll, you'll be able to see that that very closely matches this. I have my uh, coefficient in front here, whereas behind it's here. But that's just a, just a matter of commutivity. So I've uh, done my first term. Let's do my second term. Uh, let's see. I'll use a different highlighter color, we'll go with yellow. My first row, second column, is going to have a coefficient of j hat and a subdeterminant of these four values. So my determinant here is u1, put some parentheses in here, u1v3 minus 
of U3V1 if you use this technique, the, the, the crossing out technique for finding your determinant of a 3 by 3 matrix. I have to go in this direction first and then in this direction. This direction minus this direction. This product minus this product. So that's how I ended up with that. Alright, let's do our third row here. I'm going to have the third, the first row with the third column and that leaves a subdeterminant of these four values, sorry, matrix of those four values, and I'm going to take the determinant of that matrix. So I'm going to have K times U1 V2 minus U2 V1. And that is just how we find uh, determinants of three by three matrices, right? Except that we haven't considered the signs yet. Remember that we have, um, we have to take the coefficient here has to have a, a sign, S-I-G-N, of, uh, this is row 1, column 1, so it's negative 1 to the power of 1 plus 1, which is positive 1, so this term is positive. This term has a coefficient of j hat, but a sign of negative 1 to the power of row 1, column 2, so 1 plus 2, that's 3. So that coefficient is negative. And the last one, in this case, it's uh, row 1, column 4, 1 plus uh, sorry, row 1, column 3, 1 plus 3 is 4. 4 is a, uh, an even number, so that's going to be negative 1 to, the, to an even power, and that's positive. The other way you could think of this, just by way of reminder, is as your, with your plus minus grid. Remember with the 3 by 3 matrix, you know the signs of your cofactors are going to follow this grid pattern. Right, and what I've done is taken these three values, so I've got a plus, a minus, and a plus. Now, if I just take this i, this coefficient of i, and put it at the end of my this term instead of at the beginning, the same thing with j, put it here, k at the end, then I end up with exactly what I have here. So that is how you find this thing called a cross product. This version here is just, uh, this is in ijk form, this is in what we call component form. Another way to write it would be, for example, uh, u2v3 minus u3v1, uh, uv2, comma, right, we could use that uh, angle bracket notation, where you start and end with angle brackets, and then each of these uh, components between commas, each of these collections of terms, is uh, one of the components of the vector. All right, just by way of reminder, there's another way to compute this determinant, and that is as follows. I'm going to start with the same matrix determinant as I have up here, but instead of uh, closing it, I'm going to concatenate it with the first two columns of the, the first two columns again, right? So this is the I column, U1, V1. I'm just going to repeat that there, and I'm going to repeat the second column here. I don't need the third column. You could write it down if you want to, but you, you're not going to need it. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to compute this product, and I'm not sure how to do this. This product. These are the I products. And I'm going to write that as I times U2 times V3, that's this product, minus this product, I times U3 times V2. And then I can factor out the I. I get I times U2 V3 minus U3 V2. And then I'm going to do that for each of the other letters, as it were. So I'm going to do this for J. I'm going to get that product and subtract this product. And for K, I'm going to take this product and subtract this product. And that's what I mean when I say you don't need to write K down. You could, and then you'd have your third product over here. That wouldn't be bad or wrong. It's just unnecessary. So when I do that, I end up with, I've already done the first one, or I have I times U2 times V3 minus I times U3 V2, and I just factored out the I. To that, I'm going to add, I'm not going to have enough room, J times U3 times V1 minus J times U1 times V3. So that's J, I have to look at it again, U3 V1 minus J, Sorry, I had to move something and <laughs> I lost track of where I was. 
J, J is yellow. U1, V3. U1, V3. And then I'm just writing that this is equal to this. So the next thing I can do here is factor out the J, and I would get J times U3, V1 minus U1, V3. And then I'll do the same thing with K, with the K term, right? So I'll get plus K times. The only reason I've done this a second time is to show you, to remind you that there is a second method. I'm not going to finish this because we end up with the same result. This middle term is different. Notice that it's uh, U3V1 minus U1V3 instead of U1V3 minus U3V1. But also notice that I'm adding here instead of subtracting. So if I were to distribute this negative here, this term would become positive. U3V1 would be positive and u1 v3 would be negative as it is here. So just be careful with your signs. Pick a technique that works for you and then stick with it. That's my advice. Be consistent and you're less likely to make those mistakes. Okay, let's take a look at an example. Here are two 3 by 3 vectors and we are going to find r cross s. We're going to do this by setting down r and s, and then going back and, and inserting, you can start with ijk, I just tend to write the vectors down first, um, inserting the vector ijk and then we're going to take its determinant. And I'm going to go ahead and just do it this way, this is the way I've always done it. If you would prefer to concatenate this with, uh, with another copy of i and another copy of j and just do the other technique that I showed you, that's absolutely fine. Um, but I think you get it. I hope you get it by now that there are a couple of different ways to do this, and I'm just going to go ahead and do it this way. So the first thing I'm going to do is write down i and then take the determinant of the submatrix there. This determinant is equal to i times 2 times negative 2 minus 3 times negative 1. And then I'm going to write down j and my subdeterminant there is 1 times negative 2 minus 3 times 2, which is 6. And lastly, I have k, and that gives me, uh, that subdeterminant is 1 times negative 1 minus, where am I, k, 2 times 2, which is 4. And then recalling that my um, sign pattern for coefficients for the for the cofactors is plus, minus, plus, minus, plus, minus, plus, minus, plus. I want the plus, minus, plus from this row. So I have no sign change to the first term, a minus in the second term, and a plus in the third term. The first term is positive, so I just, I don't need to write a plus there. I can, but I don't need to. Then I'll do the arithmetic, and at the same time, I'm going to move my coefficients to the end. So I'm going to get negative 4 plus 3, which is negative 1i, minus negative 2 minus 6 is negative 8j plus negative 1 minus 4 is negative 5 times k and then of course I can tidy that up as well. I can either write negative 1i or I can just write negative i plus 8j minus 5k. Now that is the vector that is a result of crossing r with s. That is r cross s. It's a new vector. But depending on how your problem was originally written, I was given these two vectors in this form, it might be best practice to change that form. So I'm going to rewrite this as negative 1, 8, negative 5. And the reason for that is because this form now matches the form that the problem was given in. If I'd been given r equals 1, 2, 3, and s equals 2, negative 1, negative 2, then I would have written my answer as negative 1, 8, negative 5, just for consistency. Okay, these are all equivalent, but which one you choose depends in part on what's appropriate. How was the problem given? The answer should probably match that. Okay, I've erased that last form because I want to do uh, another example here. I'm just going to do s cross r because I want to see if they are the same. This is one way to tell, can I generalize the statement s cross r equals r cross s? Are those always true? Is that always going to be true for every 
case. Now, if I find that it is the same, then I will not be able to say it's always true. But if it's different, I will be able to say it's not always true. I know that's a bit confusing, but all right. So very quickly here, I'm going to write this as I times this the subdeterminant of those four terms, which is negative 3 minus negative 4 minus j. I'm now just jumping to the fact that I know, I know this coefficient is going to be positive. This one's going to be negative. This one's going to be positive. Right, so I'm just, just ju jumping right in there with that negative. Negative j times 6 minus negative 2 plus k times 4 minus negative 1, which gives me 1i minus 8j plus 5k. And as you can see, they are not the same. Let me highlight the... Actually, no, let me go ahead and put it into the correct appropriate form. 1, negative 8, positive 5. As you can see, these two, uh, these two vectors are not the same. They are very similar. Very similar. In fact, this one here is just the opposite of this one here. If I could write this as, I don't want to do this. I think I'll do it here. This is equal to negative, negative 1, positive 8, negative 5. And therefore, it's equal to negative r cross s. Okay. Now, as it turns out, that's always going to be the case. I, can, I have not proved that with this one example, but it turns out that that's always going to be the case. These two are not the same. These two things here, these two cross products, are not the same. They're similar, they're related, but they are not identical. You cannot say R cross S equals S cross R. U cross V equals V cross uh, U. It's just not true. It's not always true. So that's one caveat.